Hey, this is the old gaming geezer. Welcome along to episode 20 of the Indeterminate Stuff. Now, as you can see here, I am making a mid-course correction for the Satanta on its long journey out to Jewel. I wanted to talk for a second about the name that I chose for this ship, Satanta. Satanta is a character from ancient Celtic mythology. He grew up to be called Cúculain. Uh, he is said to be the, su the son of the god Lug the Ildana, uh, but he had a mortal father called Conor Magnessa. Uh, as I said, he grew up to be called Cúculain after he killed the hound of a local smith called Cullen. Um, killed him to protect himself, and that the, and Cullen was so distraught because the, the hound had been his companion and his protector that the young boy Satanta said, "Well, I will train you a new hound, and it will be better than the last one. But until I can train this hound, I will be your hound." And so from then on, he was known as Cuchulain, and he grew up to be a, a mighty warrior in Celtic mythology. It is said that he single-handedly defeated the forces of Connacht under Queen Maeve, who came to Ulster to to steal the prize bull of Kulna. He defeated her by invoking the, the right of single combat, and so the queen sent champion after champion to try to defeat this mighty Ulster warrior, Kukulin. But he beat them all, every single one of them. Uh, he had a very interesting life, did loads of things. He was a mighty warrior, had loads of children, and uh, if I remember correctly, he even was forced to kill one of his own sons. For some reason, and some tragic reason, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. So that's enough of the history lesson, I think. Uh, we, the Satanta is now on its way uh, to a proper jewel encounter, and so now we switch to the... Um, I can't remember the name of this ship. Oh, the Expressway to Heck. The Expressway to Heck is uh, doing a very similar maneuver. It's like, it's maybe a three or four days later, and I notice when I go out here that I've actually lost my encounter something has gone wrong with um with my with my with my course correction i don't know what it is but i've lost my encounter with jewel so i gotta figure this out i gotta reset up a, a new encounter and do a new course correction and so i uh spend the usual amount of time that i generally do trying to get a good encounter uh because well it takes ages so i got finally got my encounter uh Doing a little fine tuning here to get it right in. Uh, I want to get I want to get fairly close because I want to be in a good position to come in and either arrow break around Jewel or arrow break around Lathe. So here we are burning to get even closer. I'm just fine tuning, and there we see the Julian system in our map there. Yeah, for some reason my um, my Apple Nad had dropped away from Jewel. So I had to bring it back in. Apponad, I'm trying to get that into the regular regular usage for uh, for Kerbal Space Program. So remember, Apponad, Perinad. You heard it here first, folks. Yes. And so we've got it on. We've got it on course. The expressway to heck is now on course. Back to Jewel. So we're good. We're good to go. Meanwhile, I need to make a um, course correction with my Eve probe, uh, which I am sending down into a lower orbit around the sun of Kerbal. Um, to intercept with the planet Eve, which is why it's called the Eve Probe, funnily enough. So we make our, um, we make, we get our, our, um, encounter, and I bring in the, uh, the, the encounter as low as I can, and I set up my maneuver node for the change of sphere of influence, I set up my alarm, should I say, for change of sphere of influence, and it turns out that that's actually the next thing is going to happen, and so here we are, this is the first time I've ever been to the big uh, purple planet of hell. For I'm sure you know Eve is possibly the hardest planet on the in the in the game to land and take off from because its atmosphere is so thick and it has gravity around about the same as Kerbin uh, that it takes something like I don't know 12 meters per second worth of delta v just to get into orbit which is enormous which is more delta v than and I think that, that that my jewel ships have to get out to jewel, maneuver around, and get back. So it's really, really, really tough place to, to uh, land and to explore. And so here I am going into uh, doing an orbital burn, and I'm going to do some science and transmit it back because, well, there's no way that I'm going to be able to bring the science back from this thing. So I'm just going to uh, get into orbit and do a little bit of science. Uh, Doing some goo, doing some materials-based stuff. I have a couple of other things on there. For example, I've got a thermometer on there. 
Obviously, I don't have things like... Um, uh, oh, that's a gravioli detector there. Obviously, I don't have a barometer because, well, I'm not going down into the atmosphere. So I'm planning on staying here in orbit around Jewel, and sorry, around Eve for a little while, or purple, purple Eve. Um, and I'm going to scan for Keithane, because I've got a Keithane scanner on top there. So I'm going to do a little Keithane scanning for a little while, and then I'm going to head out to Gilly, the moon of Eve. But uh, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to just sit here scanning for Keithane for several weeks or months, whatever. So the next thing to come up with my alarm clock was my Duna Kerbin launch window. And so, Bill, Jebediah, and Bob must finally leave the Red Planet, where they've had a very successful journey. A very successful mission indeed, and we leave the Great Lander, which, uh, <laughs> which made three landings. Two on Duna and one on Ike. And uh, there we see, we say goodbye to their lander that has served them so well for this entire mission. Uh, even when it did crash into the command module. But that wasn't the lander's fault. That was Jeb's fault. Goodbye. Goodbye, lander. And now we say farewell to the planet Jewel. Sorry, to the planet Duna. And in the distance behind us, to the moon of Ike. As we prepare to burn. To eject from Duna orbit. And return to Kerbin. Doing the last little bit of just making sure we can. We've done all the science in orbit now as we burn with impunity to get home. Bill, Jeb, and Bob are, are their heroes in there. They're looking forward to getting home to it, to heroes welcome. And there they finish their ejection burn from Duna. And soon they will be leaving the sphere of influence of the Red Planet and entering interplanetary space again. So, one last look behind them as Duna and Ike recede into the distance. Goodbye, Red Planet. Farewell. And so, the next thing in my alarm clock was Bill, Jeb, and Bob arriving back at Kerbin. That trip out to Jewel is a long one. It's going to take quite a while. Uh, and so we get back to... Uh, we get back to Kerbin, and the, the three boys get their first look at Kerbin in a long time. It's been a few years now since they've been here, and they... I'm gonna look out through the porthole. That's awesome. I'm gonna look out through the side. It's great. <laughs> and so now we're approaching Kerbin. We're gonna come in and we're gonna do a little bit of an arrow breaking maneuver. Uh, we're, this ship is not designed to land on Kerbin. It's gonna be a totally reusable ship. Um, it's a small transfer ship, but it's got enough uh, oomph to bring something. It probably got enough oomph to bring something at Jules, so. I'm going to keep it in orbit, um, do an aero break to, uh, to capture, to, to capture myself into a Kerbin orbit, and there we have, we have our Kerbin orbit. We almost got a moon encounter there, but we didn't need one, so the next thing we gotta do is send somebody up to bring these three orange-suited heroes home. And so this is my, uh, my crew plane, um, I call it the lo lo oh, lolly goose or something. I can't remember what I called it. Oh god, I'm terrible at this sort of thing. So, and this is a. Uh, I, I'm loving space planes now that I've uh, actually learned how they work. Um, so I'm sending up this space plane, and it has got a four-seater compartment in the back behind the cockpit where our three boys will be able to return home as we go through the clouds. Sparse clouds today. It's a clear day. Kerbin, with the KSC and visibility is quite far to me. And so uh, I did the final rendezvous with the actual Junopolis 1 because Space Plane has got uh, uh, Floppy Goose, that's what I called it, Floppy Goose. The Floppy Goose Space Plane has got uh, very little fuel, so I figured the, uh, the Junopolis 1 had loads of fuel left, so it would do the rendezvous. And so here we are. Our great heroes returning home after their great mission. This is Bill getting all of the science into the space plane. He's taking it all from the capsule of the Junopolis 1. And in he goes. Uh, next over is Bob. 
And he... He's just gonna fly straight over there. He's, uh... Bob is kind of a no-nonsense kind of guy. Straight in. Straight over. No faffing about. He gets into the uh, passenger capsule on the on the space plane. Leaving Jebediah to turn out the lights to make sure he didn't leave anything under the seats. You notice that Jebediah wasn't allowed to fly this ship. Uh, not, he wasn't, he's not been allowed to fly very much since the, um, <clears throat> the crashing incident in Duna orbit. Uh, but, you know, he redeemed himself when he actually landed on Duna and uh, docked back with the Dunopolis 1 with, uh, with no problems at all. So Jeb takes one last look at the Junopolis 1. Who knows, maybe he may fly it again some point in the future. It is in perfect working condition. All it needs to be done is refueled, and it's ready to go out again. And so Jeb flies back to the Floppy Goose and prepares to return home to the surface of Kerbin that he has not seen in many a year. And so our two pilots, Bart Van and Bartred, take our fly our boys back, and it seems that their inexperience as pilots is beginning to tell here because we overshoot the KSC, and we're going to have to turn around and come back. Now we are very, very low on fuel for our jet engines here. Uh, and so this is a bit of a disaster. However, we do have... A fallback position. We do have a contingency plan. And that is the island runway. So as we slow down, finally we we lose the... Uh, we're going slow enough so we're no longer getting the uh, re-entry effects. And we can maneuver now so we're slowly turning around to line ourselves up with the island runway. So here we are coming in to the island runway. And we're still moving quite fast. Um, I really should have cut the engines long before this, but I didn't. Uh, we're going really fast, but I'm lining up to the runway and trying to get it as straight as possible. Um, and at the same time, I'm hoping I'm going to slow down. This plane doesn't like to slow down. <laughs> it likes to go fast. And as we approach the runway, I'm getting worried. I'm getting really worried. I think we're going way too fast. So we bring it down. I can see our shadow below. So I start, start to flare just before we hit the ground. And we touch down. Oh, and we almost hit that. But we bounce up again. And we've overshot the runway. So the only thing we can do is wave off. And come around for another pass. And that was hair-raising. That was I was on the edge of my seat as I was piloting that plane down. So Bart Van and Bartrand. Or Bartrand? I can't make it his name. They're, they're not happy because they know that if this goes wrong, it's their fault. They, these guys got to get this plane down safely. Otherwise, they're going to be the ones that killed Jebediah, Bill, and Bob. So this time, slowing down quite a lot. We're still going pretty fast, but they're much more aggressive with the flaring as they get down. So we pop it down. The brakes are on, and we lose a wing. But... The plane comes to a rest. We're all right. It was a disaster, but it could have been way worse. And so, as our brave heroes exit the plane to get their first taste of fresh, curban air, they know that they are true heroes. They have been to another planet. Not just a moon, but another planet. They have been to Duna. They've come back with a bounty of science, a bounty of knowledge to bring forth the advancement of the Kerbal species. They are brave heroes. Brave heroes indeed. Would Bill, Jeb, and Bob safely home this time to turn our attention out to Jewel, where more brave heroes are about to encounter the giant, the jolly green giant. Satanta is, a, is just, has just come into Jewel's sphere of influence, and now it's rotating around very, very slowly uh, to get its maneuver nodes to fine tune our approach. I have, I've got myself coming in almost perfectly to 
to have an encounter with Lathe. So we are definitely going to be to be arrow breaking around Lathe. So here's me doing my maneuver to bring my Lathe orbit right in, right in close, and bring it down to about between. Well, I don't know how much I'm bringing it down by because the ship wobbles so much. This far out, it's impossible to tell what my lathe um, periapsis will be. Uh, we're going to switch to the uh, to <laughs> to the map, and there, that that's my projected projected orbit. And because my ship is wobbling around so much, my center of mass is moving around. It's just impossible to get it. Uh, any tiny movement with the ship this far out, it just makes the orbit change dramatically. And so I'm trying desperately to just fine-tune it in and trying to get close. I'm, I'm trying to get around maybe 20 or 25 um, kilometer periapsis, which I think will slow me down enough to get me into a lathe capture. Um, but I figure at this point I'm going to wait till I get a little bit closer because it's impossible impossible to do that burn from out so far and here we are as we approach it if we are starting to get our first view of the beautiful green giant and we see the moons circling around it isn't that good there's a the great green spot this looks much better with the uh with the um the mod i'm using oh here we're coming approaching up on lathe the mod i'm using is the visual enhancements mod and here we are we're coming up on lathe and I check my orbit now, and it seems to have stabilized at around 25, or it hasn't quite yet. Um, and now we're approaching. This is perfect. We're coming right in in an orbit around Jewel, just in behind Lathe, and we're going slightly faster. So by the time we encounter Lathe, we're going to be, we're not going to be moving as fast as, for example, I was when I was doing my dark multiplayer thing, where I was coming in at like eight thousand meters per second at this point i'm encountering later around three thousand meters per second which is much much better and so we have our coming up to our late encounter the uh nav ball just switched over there we've got a periapsis of 24 kilometers above the surface of lathe the lathe has got a thinner atmosphere than Kerbin, so if you were to have a peri if you were trying to aero break around Kerbin with a periapsis of 24 kilometers you would probably crash into the planet but lathe not so much. So, I'm stowing my solar panels, because if I try to aero break with the solar panels, they're going to be ripped off. The only thing I have to worry about now is those two planes. I do not know what's going to happen when those planes hit the atmosphere. I have a niggling fear that they're going to rip the spaceship apart. I don't know will that happen. But so, we shall soon find out, as we drop closer and closer to the atmosphere of Lathe. We are 90 kilometers above the surface now. The atmosphere starts at around 50. We're coming down. Look at those beautiful clouds. It has a slight purple tinge to it. Lathe has got, uh, is mostly ocean, but there are um, small islands and archipelagos dotted around the oceans of Lathe, and it's on one of those larger islands, possibly two of those larger islands, that these planes will be landing at. Each plane can carry two Kerbals, so hopefully... Oh, we're entering the atmosphere now. So each of those planes can carry two, two Kerbals, so we're going to send four Kerbals down to the surface. And now we are in the atmosphere, coming down 32 kilometers above the surface. 30 kilometers above the surface. At this point, in uh, if we were on Kerbin... Oh, here we go. Now we're seeing some flame effects from the ionized gas as we slam into the air. I'm still dropping. I still do not have a capture. If I kept going now without slowing down any more from the air, I would shoot out the other side of Jewel, of the Jewel system. But we're slowing down. We're still falling. Our orbit is curling around. You can see our orbit curling around. We're still falling. But we're coming to the lowest point in our orbit. Very soon we're going to start rising up again. And the planes are, haven't been ripped off. I'm so happy. <laughs> I was very worried about the planes. Very worried indeed. But 
it looked like it was okay. Oh, the camera flipped there while we were in the map mode, so that means we're pretty close to being into orbit. And here we go, we're about to go into orbit. There we go, we have a highly um, eccentric orbit around Lathe, but we're still slowing down and we're rising up again. We're now back up to t almost 26 kilometers. We went down to about 23,500 meters, 23 and a half kilometers. But now we're rising up again. It looks like our aero braking maneuver has been a resounding success. And in um, in a couple of months, we're going to have to do it again with the with the expressway to heck, which uh, which is going to be coming in soon. Well, there we go. We have a successful aero braking maneuver around the moon of Lathe. This is the old gaming geezer. I'm going to sign off. If you like this video, please hit like below. If you really like this video, maybe you'd like to subscribe. Next time, the expressway to heck will be arriving at Jewel and we will be landing on Lathe. Possibly Paul, Bop, Tylo, Val. We shall see. Good night. Farewell. Hasta luego. Adieu.